He's an editorial coordinator at Daily Sabah. Great to have you with us, Mehmet. It's clear that Turkey's uh, defence exports industry is on the rise. We're seeing an increasing demand from many countries, including Ukraine and in the Middle East. Explain to us, how has uh, Turkey's defence industry grown over the last few years and how has it managed to grow rapidly in such a short amount of time? Well, if we were to fast forward this story, this success story, it is it lies basically on, I think, three different uh, levels. One, um, it is the limitations by the countries where Turkey used to export its defense products from um, due to political reasons or other reasons where Turkey was not able to obtain these uh, defense needs uh, where it had to equip itself against external threats. Now, this has pushed Turkey to develop its own indigenous uh, industry in a way where uh, now we have minimized for that 80% uh, dependency to somewhere around 20% 20 dep 20 dependency on external uh, contribution to defense industry. So this is a big success. But behind this, there is a vision that has uh, developed a know-how and, and, and a, a skilled labor force that focuses on defense industry and defense technologies. But in line with this, I think there is a political vision that now if we, you know, we mentioned the footprint in, in from Latin America to Central Asia to Africa, but in parallel to these defense-related developments, we see political engagement with these geographies that had facilitated Turkey's opening in terms of defense to these geographies as well. If we look at Latin America, there is an engagement, political engagement with Latin America. If we look at Africa, there is a political and economic engagement that has facilitated now from that, you know, Turkey that used to focus solely on development cooperation with Africa to a, to a Turkey that is able to engage and, and materialize defense related agreements with African countries. And the same thing for Central Asia, of course. So there is a parallel between the defense industry and the diplomatic engagement or diplomatic vision that has now brought a success uh, uh, for Turkish defense industry at a global level. I think in addition to these two very important factors, there is Turkey's, uh, uh, you know, global, uh, uh, Turkey's uh, role in many different conflicts around the world and how it has elevated itself to one that is now, uh, uh, you know, uh, very uh, impactfully affecting the different conflicts in different parts of the, of the world through its engagement with defense industry. In yes. Ukraine, for example, the, the, the Bayraktar drones were very effective. In Libya, in Syria, in South Caucasus, they have proven uh, their success and their effectiveness, which now has brought to, uh, this focus on Turkey's defense industry. But you know, these three levels behind the success, there is a huge manpower now that is very skilled and the know-how is very developed in Turkey. When we look at okay, some uh, of the uh, very... Man, I'm sorry, just before we let you go, uh, can I just ask you about the geopolitical driving factors behind the rise of Turkey's defence industry? Because we know traditionally uh, defence companies from countries like the United States, the UK and other Western countries have dominated this space. But to what extent has the changing geopolitical dynamic helped really, uh, I guess, boost the industry in Turkey itself as it seeks to play, uh, I guess, a, a more assertive role in geopolitics and a space that hasn't been taken up by the traditional Western powers? Well, to, to put it very simply, Turkey has two very, you know, problematic states along its southern border where they have been a, a, a fertile ground for terrorist groups. And these terrorist groups have, for a long time now, namely the PKK, for example, for the past 40 years, it has been a very solid security threat to Turkish sovereignty and Turkish citizens. When, when Turkey's traditional allies failed to support Turkey with defense capabilities, Turkey had to look for alternatives and to find ways to develop its own uh, indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, 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 um, basically, uh, capability so that it can actually face and confront uh, these threats assertively. Yes. When, we, when we look at the South Caucasus, this is the same. But Turkey has to now protect its own border or borders with its own means 
because due to the political disagreements, its NATO allies failed to support Turkey when it comes to defense. So it had to basically build its own defense industry to confront these threats coming from a neighboring region. Okay, Mehmet Çelik, uh, always good to get your thoughts. Thanks again for joining us.